Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Heather Denniston, and with me today is Carly Stein, and she and I have kind of an interesting history, but the most important thing you want to know about her is that she owns, a, she's founder, CEO of a company called Beekeepers Naturals, and you're going to hear all about that, but what you're going to learn about mostly today is a lot about the healing impacts inside a hive and the things that we can learn from different components of honey and how to use them. We're going to get all sorts of info from Carly on that today. I want to welcome you, Carly. Thank you for taking time for us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is going to be great. So Carly, uh, funny story. Uh, I had just left practice and started well fit and fed and I went to Paleo FX in Austin, Texas, and I'm walking through the vendor show and I've probably been at it for uh, three, three quarters of a year. And this lovely woman comes after me and taps me on the shoulder and says, are you well fit and fed? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just got my first stranger <laughs> recognition. And I was so dang excited. And so I made her take a selfie with me. And that is, of course, none other, none other than Carly. And uh, what is so awesome is that at that event, am I right, Carly? It was one of your first events with Yeah, that. maybe my, my like, their first handful, like very, very early. Yeah, and so the company was in its infancy, and now you are, I mean, it is everywhere. And I, th that tickles me to no end, how successful you've been, how incredibly, incredibly strategic you've been in the direction you've moved the company, and how uh, amazing the products are, which we're gonna talk about, because what I think is, is one of your secrets to success is no one, to my knowledge, is doing what you do. And we'll explain that a little further as we as we go along. I'm just I'm excited to have you here. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your background because you own this incredible company. You've got all these great products out in the market. You're this savvy business woman. woman. You split your time between New York and LA. Um, you're like, I mean, you're the package. You're the real deal. Um, you started out uh, keeping some bees. Am I right? Yeah, you're making me sound very cool. So thank you. I, <laughs> um, I started so I really it's it's like funny, this company really started with my health struggle and me just wanting to solve my problems and have something that worked. And I was so frustrated. I was obsessed with the natural product world, you know, following people like you and um, just kind of searching for information as many of us are. But I had a really horrible immune system. I had chronic tonsillitis and I had a really severe allergic reaction to most over the counter medicines and most um, antibiotics. So I just had, I was just sick all the time, like constant tonsillitis, constant strep throat. It was really rough. And when I was in college, I did a semester abroad. I was traveling in Europe and Europe is so progressive when it comes to natural health. And I had severe tonsillitis and I went into a pharmacy in Florence. And the pharmacist took one look at me and my swollen chipmunk cheeks. And she said, you need propolis. And I had never heard of propolis before. So I was like, okay, what is that? And she said, it's from the bees. And I was like, oh, so honey. And she's like, no, not honey, propolis, totally different thing. So like many of us, I thought all the, that the bees did was make honey. Um, but I was desperate and looking for anything to help me feel better so I didn't have to cut my time abroad short. So I bought this propolis stuff and it was like a little dark tincture there was no information on it <laughs> Using it, and in about five days I had a pretty remarkable recovery what happened for me was propolis functioned in my body the way antibiotics do for most people but without any adverse reaction mm. so I started incorporating it in, into my routine and then as I was traveling around Europe I started seeing bee products everywhere they were really commonplace um, and for different things like I remember finding anti-aging supplements with royal jelly in France um, pollen was being used in Copenhagen for energy boosting and propolis pretty much everywhere I went was used for inflammation and immune concerns. Huh. And so I was using all these things and I started feeling really good. I didn't get sick for the rest of my travels and I was just, I, it sparked this fascination with bee products because they were so impactful for me and yet I had never heard of them in North America. And so I'm using these products traveling having a great time i finished my my semester abroad up and come back home to finish up college and i got really sick i had really bad um, a really bad viral throat issue mm -hmm. and i i wasn't so worried so i was like i just need propolis so i went to every health food store 
asking for propolis. Nobody really knew what I was talking about. And I finally found propolis at this farmer's market and it was organic and artisanal and it was like $40 for a teeny tiny tincture. And I used it and I had a really bad allergic reaction. And uh, that was of course very upsetting. And I did, I was a student and I was taking a ton of chemistry courses. And so I ran a toxicity test on the product I had purchased and I figured out there was a, quite a bit of pesticides in it despite being organic. Oh. And that's when I started learning about the beekeeping industry because the bees can forage, they can fly and collect from flowers for a five mile radius. And the organic radius is actually less than that. Oh. So, you know, with livestock or blueberries, you can fence them in and keep them in one area. But the bees, you can't put a leash on the bees. <laughs> so just because it's certified organic land, if the neighbors are doing something dirty, the bees can get exposure and all of a sudden it's in your natural product. You have these toxins in your natural product. So I was in this tricky position where I knew exactly what I needed. I needed propolis, but I couldn't get it in the quality that worked for me. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess I have to do this myself. And so I started beekeeping. Um, I'm from Canada. I went to college at University of Victoria, so on Vancouver Island. So I was able to like literally be keep in the middle of the woods and get that five mile radius of clean surrounding area. And from there, I really fell in love with it. It started as a pursuit for these products. And once I learned about the bees and the impact they have in our environment, and you know, once I also learned more about the different roles that their byproducts can take in our health, I just became completely obsessed. And so beekeeping was my hobby. Um, it was like a weird hobby that my friends didn't understand. Now it's sort of hipster and you're starting to see people keep yeah. uh, But in 2012, when I started beekeeping, it was like weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I mean, that's incredible. And one thing we also share, which I, I, we didn't know until we talked for a little bit at that event, was that we both went to University of Victoria. And if you know anything about Victoria, it is a gorgeous, beautiful um, span of land with lots of great hiking. And, and so I can completely envision your beekeeping sort of area out in the woods and and how clean that could have been and so you started the company and what was the first thing that you felt like the market needed yeah so it was a few years later so i i really found my passion for bees and beekeeping and making these products starting in 2012 and it wasn't really until 2017 mm -hmm. that i really truly launched the company it was this was and that's why I think that we that people have such a strong response to our products because this was not something that I started to make money. This was something I started to help myself. Yeah. And so I every single thing that we brought to market, it's something that I've perfected for personal use. And yeah. I'm now kind of sharing with the world. Um, but the company really started, you guys probably saw me spraying it at the start of this, <laughs> with, um, our Propolis throat spray. So Propolis is the bee product that got me hooked. Um, what propolis actually is. So maybe I should do a breakdown of bee products because it is a very different. Yeah, and that was that was the next question we were going to talk about was, and that, that is a really good uh, segue for us to do, is people are like propolis, honey, uh, bee pollen, royal jelly. What? So can you do sort of a, a just a quick and dirty breakdown sure. of what those are and maybe just like one or two health benefits of, of each of those perhaps? For sure. So I'll talk about what each of them do in the hive and then how they play a role in human health. As yeah. Well. yeah. So I'll start with honey because everyone knows it. I've got one right here. Um, this is a honey, obviously. <laughs> so honey is the, is the bee's food. It's their energy source. It's their carbs. They collect it from floral nectar. And they bring it back to the hive. They evaporate out the water. They have it ferment. And it is their food. Um, and then for humans, it's got antiviral properties. It's full of antioxidants. And it's really high in enzymes. Honey is actually the only food in the world that doesn't go bad, which is a testament to its enzyme uh -huh. quality. And so I love using honey for digestion. I take it um, with food sometimes, just a little bit with my food. It's sort of like taking uh, a digestive enzyme for me. And then another thing that I really like to do with honey is I like to use it in the evening. It's a really great thing to have before bed because it causes a slow, steady spike in insulin, which allows the tryptophan in your body to cross the blood brain barrier, where ah. it's converted into serotonin and melatonin in the dark. So honey actually helps your body to calm down and get ready for bed. Um, it's a really fantastic natural sleep aid. It, it also mm -hmm. helps you to sleep through the night. This happens especially with women. Sometimes they'll wake up in the middle of the night and what happens is their glycogen stores and their liver are depleted and it triggers this like crisis search for fuel. Yeah. 
wake, your brain wakes you up essentially because it thinks you're hungry. And so when you have honey before bed, because it's slow release and sort of the nature of it, it helps to stock glycogen in the liver and it will help you sleep through the night. So for me, I do honey, I do different honeys at different times. I do our CBD honey before bed and I'll do our bee powered honey in the morning, but honey high level, full of antioxidants, good to help with sleeping, um, high in enzymes and it's the bee's food. Okay. And then propolis to have here. So you can think of propolis as the bee's medicine. So honey comes from flowers and propolis comes from plant and tree resins. So it's a little bit more adaptogenic in nature. The base material is a little bit more medicinal. And how the bees will use it is they mix these, the sap and resins they collect from plants and trees with their enzymes. And they make this sticky amber colored substance called propolis. And they use it to line the entire hive to keep it germ free. So huh. it's literally the protective lining of the hive. And even for newborns, what they'll do is for um, the cells where they put the baby bees in, they'll line the cell walls with propolis to create a sterile environment for newborns. And let's say a predator gets into the hive like a mouse, the bees can sting it and kill it, but they can't physically pick up and carry a dead mouse out of the hive. So what they'll do once they kill the mouse is they'll mummify it in propolis, and it's that powerful of an antibacterial, antiviral agent that it protects the entire hive from wow. the sticking rodent in their living room. So in the hive, it's the protector. For humans, it's antiviral, antifungal, antimicrobial, antibacterial. It's an amazing immune booster. It's great for combating any sort of virus cold, flu, sore throat symptoms. Um, it's really, really great for getting rid of that. You can use it preventatively as well as proactively. So I'm not sick right now, but I spray propolis every day and I do it daily for inflammation and just to generally stabilize and support my immune system. Okay. It's really changed my immune system. I honestly used to constantly get sick and now I'm like changing time zones and flying and you know doing all of this stuff and I don't sleep as much as I should. Um, and propolis really helps me to stay healthy. And then if I do feel something coming on, I can kind of knock it out before it starts. And I just double dose my propolis. So okay. I put it in my purse and I'm spraying all day. So propolis, it's the protector of the hive. It's the medicine of the hive. And it's kind of like your silver bullet um, immune protector that you can kind of use for, for anything immune related, really. Um, yeah. It's super anti-inflammatory as well. So if you do want to use it topically, it can be helpful there. Um, and then pollen. And I kind of want to eat some of this right now. <laughs> in a second. So pollen is the bee's protein. Um, it's collected from, it's the pollen of plants. And they'll mix it with their enzymes as well. And pollen is a really awesome food for humans because it's, um, it's kind of like an all-in-one multivitamin. So it's really high in vitamins, minerals, anti antioxidants. Um, broad spectrum vitamins. So for me, I just do a teaspoon of pollen every day and I do that in place of a multivitamin. I like to, I like getting my vitamins from sort of more bioavailable sources and because mm -hmm. pollen is really high in enzymes and it's kind of a functional food, your body's really absorbing and taking everything in. It's also really high in BCAAs, so it's awesome for athletic people. Huh. Um, I do it after a workout as well. And it can, it can support your um, endurance. There's been a few studies that have found that pollen increases blood hemoglobin value. And it helps to oxygenate the tissue. So if you are an active person, pollen is like a very good choice. Okay, and let me stop you right there because I have a couple quick questions. Yeah. I did not know that about the BCAAs for pollen. I'm a big BCAA fan. I love the idea of it. Now, the pollen, people probably can't see that super clearly, but it's like little, little bits. And so how do you take, do you just take it off a tablespoon or do you put it on your yogurt or what do you, how do you do it? So it's like little granules here. I'm actually going to have some in a sec. I'm, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm like insane with bee products. So I'm just going to yeah. drink it right now. Sure. But sure. I do before a workout, it depends. Like if I'm on the go and I'm rushing when I'm traveling a lot and I maybe don't feel like I've nutritionally covered all my bases, I'll just do, you know, a teaspoon of pollen. And because it's raw, a teaspoon is like, I take more than a teaspoon, but yeah. all you need is a teaspoon. A teaspoon is more than enough. Our pollen's raw. It's high grade. Um, okay. It's super potent. So, you know, a teaspoon max, I say for most people, particularly those starting out. But I use it in different ways. I'll put it, I'll sprinkle it on top of my smoothies. I sprinkle it on my salads because it's also highly enzymatic. Uh, it's just like a great nutritional boost for anything. I like to do avocado toast and sprinkle pollen on top. I use it as a garment. I my, my baby brother, I have a two-year-old brother, and I sneak it into his almond butter and jam sandwiches. And so that's like a good thing for anyone with little ones. Um, so is it too sweet or no? It's a little bit sweet. I'm just gonna have some. Right Do it. <laughs> That's fantastic. 
And it's, I love, um, I wasn't sure if that was the B powered, but it's, we're not mm -hmm. there yet, but because the B powered to me is my favorite product of yours and I've got mine here and you guys can see it is almost empty. And uh, the B powered, it looks just like basic honey, but it is like a supercharged, crazy combination of, mm -hmm. of royal jelly, the propolis and honey, am I right? You're right. So be powered. It's actually, it's much more than a honey. It's a medicinal grade product. Yes. And so in one teaspoon, you're getting medicinal grade dosages of all of the superfoods from the hive. Yeah. So in one teaspoon to be powered, you're getting 745 milligrams of royal jelly, 532 milligrams of pollen and 43 milligrams of propolis. So if you're doing be powered every day, you don't need to do the pollen as well. Okay. There's a lot of pollen in there. Um, and be and be powered. It really is an all in one, and so you're covering the immune system and inflammation with the propolis. Yeah. You're supporting brain health, focus, energy levels, concentration uh, with royal jelly. You are also boosting energy, giving your body a nice dose of broad spectrum vitamins and some protein with pollen. Pollen actually has more protein per weight than any animal source. So oh, for God. vegetarians as well, it's a great thing to incorporate if you're low on B vitamins. It's really high in that. Um, it's just, it's kind of a nutritionally protective food. Yeah. Um, and then the, the bee powered, it's in a raw honey base. So it tastes delicious. It's in the raw honey format. So it's got the live enzymes. And we actually have really replicated the environment of the hive with this product. So in, in other cultures, like, you know, in Romania, my, my beekeeping mentor is from Romania. And this is like the first guy who taught me how to keep bees back when I was in college. And in Romania, they do something where they eat something called bee bread. And bee bread is literally cutting a part of the comb that has pollen, propolis, royal jelly, all these different parts in it. And it's this like amazing superfood that ever it's like, you know, everyone wants that. And it's incredible health wise, but it's not really sustainable to harvest because it is the food for the young bees. So I didn't want to do that. And so looking at this product, I was like, how can I replicate bee bread, but make it sustainable? So I'm not actually taking the bee bread from the hive. And we do that by just taking all the raw components mixing them together in a raw honey and there you go that's fantastic yeah and and guys i've been taking this ever since i met you so for 17 18 19 so for over three years and i go through so this isn't this isn't cheap it's like 40 something and and the idea is that it is medicinal grade and it's got everything in it and it this will last me months so it's it's great. It's such a good, it's my favorite product. So I, I love that one. So can you just repeat again, uh, not again, we, I sidetracked you. So Royal Jelly, tell me about that. Yeah, so Royal Jelly didn't do that one yet. So Royal Jelly, it's in a few of our products. It's in the Be Powered in a pretty high concentration. And then it's in our Be Lixer Brain Shots as well. So okay. what Royal Jelly is, Royal Jelly you can think of as the superfood of the hive. It's the food of the queen bee. So uh -huh. what happens with all newborn bees their first few days of development, they're fed royal jelly. And then all of the regular bees are transitioned off of their royal jelly diet onto a diet of pollen and honey. You can kind of think of it as almost like, you know, breastfeeding. Like yeah. you're giving them the most nourishing substance. So royal jelly is incredibly nourishing. And so all of the other bees are transitioned off onto a regular diet of honey and pollen. And the bee who's to become queen continues with her exclusive royal jelly diet. Huh. Just, you can see the biological differences there in the hive. So the queen bee... Um, the queen bee will live three to five years versus a regular worker bee during foraging season will live six to eight weeks. Oh. The queen bee will lay up to 1,500 eggs a day, so having a lot of babies, whereas regular female bees don't have reproductive organs. Hmm. Um, the queen bee is just much more robust. If anyone wants, just Google a picture of a queen bee versus a regular worker bee. Um, she looks different. She's much more robust. And the real difference there is that she's eating royal jelly. So in nature, it's obviously having some super food effects. And for humans, so royal jelly has been used all, of, none of this is new. We've been using this for thousands of years. It's just sort of something that we've lost track of as we've you know, moved more in the pharmaceutical direction. But royal jelly, it's been used across cultures for everything from hormonal stabilization to anti-aging to energy support. If you look at sort of the Western scientific focus right now, most of the studies are centered around brain health. So there was a study that came out of University of Warsaw and it found that regular consumption of royal jelly actually improves your spatial reasoning. So really great if you're an athlete, we have tons of athletes that use our Belixir products and are just really into royal jelly. 
um, really great for the brain. It's amazing for concussions. I had a really bad concussion a few months ago and Royal Jelly was a huge part of my healing protocol. And it's really amazing for the brain for a few reasons. One, because it contains something called acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter responsible for brain body connection. So you can think of Royal Jelly as literally helping your brain and body communicate and speeding up your transmission system. Um, and then it's also just a really protective substance for the brain. So it prevents neurodegenerative conditions. It's, it's really um, holistically fantastic for the brain. And then it does support energy as well. Wow. Oh my gosh. This is just such, this is like fire hose to the face of all this such great information. That was a lot of information. So I'll no, do it. But it's so good. And I mean, the good news is we can go back and watch this again. I know I will because I've already learned tons and tons of stuff I did not know. So just so fascinating. And it just, like you said a little bit back where you're saying, I like to get my supplementation from as whole food as possible and it's like oh my gosh it's right here you know it's that's just so fantastic so tell me a little bit about um if somebody because i coach a lot of folks that either want to be paleo or keto how does it fit into those diets mm -hmm. so of course honey itself is not keto right. um that being said we have quite a few people in the keto community who will have just a little bit of honey before bed um, just to kind of help stabilize everything. Yeah. Um, pollen as well, it's not keto, but that's another one where we do have members of the keto community who love this product yeah. um, because it does, it's so nutritionally dense and it's, you know, it's less of a spike um, because yeah. it has, it's a very fibrous substance. And then our propolis though, and our Belixir shots, these are actually certified keto. Oh. So, yeah, the propolis, it tastes sweet, but there's no sugar in it. It's in a non-GMO vegetable glycerin base, which tastes a little bit sweet. And then propolis itself has a nice flavor to it, but there's zero grams of sugar. You can use, like it's certified keto, you're totally fine. Felixer as well, um, it, it tastes like a little bit sweet. It has more of a medicinal taste, but it's in non-GMO vegetable glycerin. Okay. And um, that gives it a little bit of that flavor, but zero grams of sugar, totally safe if you're a keto person. Okay, awesome. And for those of you who are paleo, uh, you probably know that stevia, honey, maple syrup, all fine. So any of the products um, that Carly's talking about are suitable for paleo. Everything certified paleo that we do. Yeah, which is so great. And so what are some other things we've, we've covered a lot, but before we move on to some other stuff, is there anything that you feel like uh, any other benefits that we haven't talked about or anything that people should be aware of? I mean, I think that a lot of people are dealing with autoimmune today. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about beet products is they tend to have immunomodulatory effects. Mm -hmm. So they can be really, whether you're someone like me who just had a, or has a really weak immune system or you're struggling with something that's a little bit more insidious, these things can be really helpful to help to stabilize the system. Yeah. Um, the enzymes coming from the hive are so powerful and the enzymes are found in all of these products. So mm -hmm. it's just a really supportive way to tackle kind of, a broad range of health concerns. Um, the other big thing is propolis. So we talk a lot and we focus on its ability to support the immune system. We talk a lot about propolis and its effects for, you know, combating a sore throat or preventing flu or even, you know, reducing um, allergy symptoms. But something that propolis is really fantastic for is just all kinds of inflammation. So we have a lot of customers who struggle with things like colitis, um, you know, even sort of more viral things that are centered in the gut and propolis can be really helpful for that. A reason that I really like propolis, um, antibiotics and even a lot of the, the natural antibiotics available can be really harsh on the gut. Mm -hmm. And propolis, it actually contains natural strains of lactobacilli and it's also a really healing substance when it comes to the gut. So people with leaky gut will use propolis to help to strengthen the tinctures and the gut lining. Uh, it's really great for candida. Mm. Propolis contains a compound called pinosembrin, which acts as a fungicide in the body. So that's another kind of like pro tip um, using propolis. Yeah. Is awesome. So, um, yeah. so Carly, let me just interrupt you. Hillary's asking when you ingest these, how are they affected by acids in the gut? And I'm not sure I understand her question. Maybe you do. Um, but is there, do we need to be, to me, it's, if, if it's loaded with enzymes, it's only going to aid and, and help um, break down a digestion of your food. I don't see any counter productive activity with the acids of the gut. Do you, can you speak to that at all? Yeah, I don't think 
We haven't seen any counterproductive activity. I do know a lot of people who have um, acid reflux and heartburn and that sort of thing will use propolis after they eat because it's very mm -hmm. soothing. Um, okay. But they're all natural substances. They're all, you know, very high in enzymes, so it should be supportive. Good. Um, can you put the products? Uh, this is another question from Hillary. Thank you, Hillary, for asking such great questions. Can you put the products in hot tea or coffee without damaging the enzymes? Love this question. So. What I do, and I put I put bee powered actually in my coffee and my smoothies and that sort of thing. What I do with my coffee is I just add a little bit of nut milk first, so it's not boiling hot, and then I mix it in. Excellent. Um, you know, you're not gonna so pasteurized honey. Pasteurization is the process of heating the honey to a very high degree, and you know that squeezy bear honey that stays liquidy. Yeah. It stays that way, it stays so liquid because it's been pasteurized, mm -hmm. and it makes it easy to like spread and pour on things but it's really not healthy for you because when you're heating it to that degree, you're cooking out all the nutrients and you're essentially left with sugar water. And so all of our products are totally raw. Um, so putting them in a hot substance, it's not gonna pasteurize them. Cause again, to pasteurize honey, you're boiling it. Uh, Anytime you heat something up, you're killing some of the enzymes. That's just a reality of cooking. Um, yeah. These things are so high in enzymes and they have so many nutrients that they're still great for you. So you totally can put these things in your tea. Great. I just personally, because I'm such a purist, I like to add, I like to make it a little bit cooler before putting them in. Yeah, I think I think that's great. Great answer. Thank you for that. And thank, thanks again, Hillary, for asking the question. So uh, we can't, um, you know, wrap up any kind of interview about this unless we talk about bee population and what's happening uh, with that. And you are right in the field. So can you speak to where we're at with recovering that and and how your company practices sort of safe beekeeping and and that sort of topic if you will absolutely my favorite topic <laughs> <laughs> all my favorite topic we're just talking about yeah. things like all, 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 yeah <laughs> um so the the health of the bees is critically important to our environment i'll start there bees pollinate one third of our food supply mm -hmm. so you know if you think about that so much of what we're ingesting is bee pollinated and you know even things that we don't realize things like coffee are partially bee pollinated mm. almonds are almost completely bee pollinated apples avocados berries um even livestock they graze on clover and alfalfa and the bees help to pollinate those plants mm -hmm. so the bees really are kind of pillars of our ecosystem and without them we would have major issues with our entire food supply and ecosystem at large and what's been happening in the over the past few years is that we've seen a major decline in bee population um, there's a lot of factors that go into that. A big one, and the most important one, in my opinion, is the use of pesticides. Mm -hmm. So in 2006, we stopped using DDT, and we replaced it with something called neonicotinoids. So neonicotinoids, it's a neuroactive substance. It's the most commonly used pesticide, and we know that it affects spatial reasoning for bees. It's really damaging for the bees, but it's used in a very big way. Um, there's been some momentum in different parts of the world to ban the use or limit the use. So in Europe, they've banned the use in some places. In Canada, Ontario was actually the first place to institute mm -hmm. a partial ban. Um, the US, it's pretty bad. So we do a lot of our, almost all of our beekeeping outside of the US. I'd love to do it closer to where I live. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, all of our products, we do third party pesticide testing and we're, we're not going to risk exposure to toxins with our products. So that's why we, we right now, I'm hoping regulation changes and people kind of catch up to what's happening. Um, but right now it's, it's quite dirty in the U.S. when it comes to products and just pesticides. Um, but yeah, so pesticides, neonicotinoids are really damaging for the bees. Other factors that go into this, things like climate change, really disruptive for the bees. They hibernate over winter. So when you're having a winter and then all of a sudden it's really warm and they think it's spring, they'll come out and then freeze. Stuff like that will happen. Mm -hmm. um, just the sort of dynamics of our agricultural structure have changed. So Bees, as I said, are some of the world's most important pollinators and consumption of bee pollinated crops, things like almonds and almond milk and mm -hmm. almond based products, for example, have become super popular. And so what's happened is it used to be a situation where, you know, there's always kind of been some degree of commercial pollination, but beekeepers would work to care for the bees and harvest their products and sell their products to all of us and companies like mine. Um, but now it, it it's a little bit more lucrative in most cases to work in commercial pollination, which is when you put your bees on a truck and take them around to pollinate these crops. 
And so you're literally paid by the almond farms to put them up, put your bees on a truck, bring them over there, let them loose to pollinate, bring them back home. And so of course things can be done with care and there are people out there who are doing things in an ethical way, but oftentimes the bees are kind of thrown on a truck. It's really jarring. They're let loose to pollinate mm -hmm. while they're pollinating. It's not always the most nurturing situation. Sometimes pesticides are sprayed, sprayed while the bees are pollinating. Um, and it's just kind of a structure that's not really supportive to bee health. So what we do as a company is we try to find beekeepers who are sort of being pulled in that direction. And we say, hey, we'll pay you a premium to beekeep sustainably, keep your bees in one place, and we'll work with you um, to make sure that meets our standard of sustainability and we'll buy all the products. Wow. And so that's kind of how we do it. So we practice sustainable beekeeping. And for us, that means a few things. Really what it means is that we just put the bees first. Yeah. And a major way we do that is by limiting exposure to pesticides. And in addition to like all of the conversations and audits and the close relationship I personally, I have with the beekeepers we work with, um, we do third party pesticide testing, as I mentioned. And that's a really great measure of success for us because one, we can ensure that we have top of the line product quality. We're the only bee product company um, currently that's doing third party pesticide testing. Mm -hmm. So we have a product quality that's really unparalleled out there yeah and two we're able to to in a really material way say hey we're keeping our bees away from the toxic substances that are hurting them and with that we've actually seen amazing growth year over year like our popular our hives have huh. really been thriving year over year contrary to population trends so that's something that's one of the the many things we do to really prioritize the health of our bees that's fantastic. And so where do you, you mentioned that you primarily a beekeep outside the U.S. So where are some places that you do? We work a lot in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so we do a ton of beekeeping in Canada. It's a kind of great place for so many reasons. One, um, they have been a little bit more thoughtful about pesticide regulation. Two, it's a massive country with a tiny population. So we can really get those middle of nowhere apiaries and apiaries a bee farm. Yes. Um, and then we work in Brazil a little bit as well. In Brazil, there are real propolis specialists out there. And so we, we uh -huh. do some work there. Um, and yeah, we, we basically will just work in all of the geographies where we can get the cleanest products. We're starting to look at Europe right now as we expand. And again, we're, we're constantly looking at regulation. It would make my life a lot easier mm -hmm. if we could have some apiaries closer to where I live. Um, but this isn't about making my life easier. This is about making our customers the highest quality products that can help them heal. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, I appreciate your um, stringent attention to kind of what's going to be best for the bees. So that's so great. Um, so you are uh, an entrepreneur. You are uh, Forbes, one of Forbes 30 under 30 top entrepreneurs. And congratulations to that designation. That's fantastic. If you guys have not seen that, uh, I think it was last November that that came out. Was that right, Carly? I think so. Yeah, November, or October. And uh, and that's and it's a huge statement. Uh, but in order to become that, um, I imagine you work a few hours every day. And it's tough to balance some of your own personal wellness. So because the show is largely geared toward women and wellness, I would love to know what are some of the things outside some of your own products that you do to sustain your own personal health? Yeah, so this is a big thing for me. I really struggle with balance. It is, it is, that's like my ongoing life challenge. I naturally will just burn myself out. Like if I'm left alone, I just kind of won't stop. Um, and I'm very obsessed with the project that I'm working on. Um, and it's great in many ways, but it can also be a huge problem just for my mental health. So I, I have to really, and this is actually a 2020 initiative for me is really creating an environment that's conducive to success in every respect. And also now as the team grows, I, I want people to have a work-life balance and I want to be an example of that. So I'm trying to find that for myself. Um, of course, I use these products every day. Propolis really changed my life. So, I mean, that is kind of a given, but I, mm -hmm. it's such a foundational product and part of my wellness routine. So that is really what kind of helps me, especially when I am putting in long hours. Yeah, um, as well as one that I really rely on when I'm having kind of long days where I need to be super productive and focused. Um, but beyond that, I do, I really, I've, I'm really working on meditation right now. So I meditate every day. I have this incredible coach and she has made me these visualizations that I listen to. Um, gratitude 
is such a big practice for me. I make a gratitude list daily when I'm really stressed out and freaking out. Um, I, I try to take those moments and turn them into like a beautiful moment where I can look at what I'm thankful for and, and sort of how far I've come. So I'm really, I'm really big on just prioritizing mindfulness. I do a lot of journaling. Right now I'm not really working out with like a herniated disc, which is no. painful. But normally I'm I'm a big fan of movement. I yeah. do when I'm when I don't have a herniated disc, I run, I do yoga, I love hiking. Nature is a, is medicine for me. So it's a little bit hard when I'm in New York, but I do try to get into nature as often as possible. Um yeah. this is a weird okay, so my coach actually had me do this really beautiful exercise that I'm just going to share with everyone Please. So what it was because I'm, we get so caught up in where we want to go. We're so future focused and we lose sight of like this tiny little things that just made us happy and that we wish we could have done as kids. And so she had me make a list of things that really sparked joy for me when I was a little girl, when I was like 10 years old um, and things that I wish that I could do when I was 10 years old. And I, I try to, you know, I look at that when I'm having high stress moments and I've, I've started to incorporate that into my life and it's been such a game changer so little things like like going on a swing set yes the most fun like i i had um this really crazy day of meetings in san francisco and i made sure that in the middle of the day i i had to be on this big call and i took the call from the swing set okay that's awesome. I found a park like like my assistant we found like an a park a park that was um in proximity to where i was going and yeah that's just such a little thing that really sparks joy for me it's a huge thing and it's, it's actually dovetails really nicely i've been doing some like play and joy work uh, it's starting sort of middle to end of last year with a group that i'm part of and it's so funny you mentioned that because we all were supposed to post a photo of us on a swing set and one, one woman sparked it because her husband took her out and they went on a swing set and they took a picture of her or he took a picture of her and it was pure joy on her face and so it was an inspiration to the rest of us to go out and get our own little swing set photo and so i love that you mentioned that as one of the things on your list but what a great takeaway for people to just remember i like that you said you know when you were 10 what were things you loved doing or you wish you could do make a list keep a list and and execute it regularly to kind of help create balance in your life so that is just so awesome um what so you mentioned your favorite product is one other thing just yeah, kind of please. Thing for me especially for women um you know we do so much and having a practice around self-compassion mm -hmm. is critical i did not the the word you know thinking of compassion, the compassion I give to myself was not even something in my vocabulary, maybe six months ago. Yeah. And just having so much compassion for yourself and in the moments where you stumble, um, I think that is just critical. Yeah, that is incredible. It's um, also parallel. There's a woman uh, that was brought to my attention late last year on self-compassion. I think her name is Christine Neff. And I don't know if you've heard of her, but uh, that's all she does is self-compassion work. She's written a few books and um, and it's such it's um, I think, Carly, that's going to become more and more of a topic for us as women to be talking about. And so I love that you brought that up, especially someone in your position who you are pulled in many different directions. And as the head of a company that's on a massive trajectory up, um, that's not going to get any easier. You just have to get more and more intentional around it, right? Um, and so I love that you mentioned that. So you mentioned your favorite product of yours is Propolis, and mine is the Be Powered. I love that. I will say um, I love what, that you talked about the nighttime stuff, that you have a honey product that is has CBD in it. I did yeah. not know that. Is that new? It's pretty new. It's called Be Chill. Um, we have sticks of them that you can use on the go. I started using them on the go just when I kind of have anxiety. Yeah. Um, by the jar too. And it's our signature sustainably sourced raw honey with um, our, we, we take sourcing of everything we do really seriously. So our CBD is also really high quality, organic, all the good stuff. Um, okay. it's, it's a pretty simple formula. What we did too is we put it in an MCT oil emulsion. So you get an even mm -hmm. dosage throughout. So sometimes with CBD, with honey that has CBD in it, you take one scoop from the jar and it's got five milligrams. The next scoop has 15. Because we did an MCT oil emulsion, emulsion and then it infused it into the honey, it's even dosage. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant. I love that. 
I'll have to send you that every night before bed. Yeah, I will definitely check that product out next. That's one I haven't tried. So I'm going shopping after the show because uh, you inspired me on a couple of your other products that I hadn't tried yet. So um, I'm super excited about that. They're, by the way, the brain shots. The, I've never tried the brain shots. Oh, really? Okay, I need to send you this too. This okay. Amazing. Like this is I, a really coffee for me. Okay, I love that. And I, you know, again, back to the beginning of the show, we were talking about anything you can get that's sort of made in nature, whole food, closer to, you know, what we would normally pull from nature is awesome. And uh, it sounds like based on what you've said, you've done an exceptional job of not over processing to whatever extent that you, you can. Um, and so that we are getting as close to whole food as possible. It's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. One more question. Um, bee products in skin using honey on your face and stuff. Do you have any information on that? Obsessed with doing that. So I do a bee powered face mask once a week. Oh, um, this is like everything for me. Oh, ah. so, uh, so many benefits. So first of all, honey is a humectant. So it actually helps to strengthen the moisture barrier of the skin. For me, I have combination skin, which is the most annoying thing to deal with. And so that's why this product is the best too, because it helps my, especially changing, going between New York and LA, I'm like in the sun and then it's yeah, and all of that. So honey is a humectant. It helps to really hydrate. And then the propolis in there is antibacterial. So it helps with blemishes. Um, it's anti-inflammatory as well. So inflammatory conditions like rosacea, um, any, any sort of inflammatory skin condition, eczema, psoriasis, propolis is really supportive for. And then royal jelly is actually a collagen builder. Huh. So aging so and then pollen is full of protein and vitamins so you're giving your your skin like a real vitamin boost that helps you glow so what i do is i literally just take a spoon of this put it in a bowl slather it all over my face um after i've washed my face i leave it on for 10 to 20 minutes okay it's a little bit drippy so you don't want to wear a cute top with this <laughs> um, but yeah and then i just wash it off in circular motions and it's really nice as well because the honey granules help to exfoliate. Yeah, and so you don't use soap after you just you you just wash it off with water and then leave it. Yep. Okay. I actually wash so on days where I'm wearing if I'm wearing face makeup then I'll use, you know, a face cleanser, but some days I won't wear makeup. Um, and on those days in the evening I'll wash my face with just honey cuz honey is antibacterial. Ah. So it is something you can totally do. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so where is the best, okay, first of all, where's the best place for people to buy your products and where's the best place for people to reach out to you if they want more information? So best place to buy our products, you can find us at beekeepersnaturals.com. Okay. In March, we're actually launching nationally with Whole Foods. <gasps> In March, you'll be able to get your bee powered at your local Whole Foods. You'll be able to get your bee elixir shots and your pollen um, and all of the goodies. Oh so my God. Really all these products be really accessible. Um, but in the meantime, you can find us online and you can find tons of information there. We have an awesome blog and just information all over our website, whether you want to learn more about bee products and the nutritional benefits, you want to learn more about the sustainability side or how you personally can make an impact with the bees. Um, mm -hmm. we have tons of information. We're also all over social media. Our Instagram is beekeepers underscore natural. So come check us out. We have a Facebook group as well. And yeah, we, we love hearing from you guys. So please let us know. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So very good. And uh, before we wrap up, just so you know, anybody who has been watching the show, uh, Carly and her company are offering a 15% discount. And I'm going to put the links below. And also you can just type in well, fit and fed all capitals when you do your checkout and that should apply it. Um, and uh, I'll make sure that the links are here and that uh, you get that information. If you want to take advantage of that, it won't be forever, but it will be be for a certain period of time and uh, that is a great discount and I really appreciate you offering that to those that are really interested in the products so thank you for that Carly. You're so welcome. Excited to try it. Yeah so great well listen we uh, are going to sign off uh, will you uh, oh, one more question oh does it mean that we can get it from Amazon you can get it uh, Hillary you can get it from Amazon right now um, and so she's saying does it mean that we can get it from Amazon when it's at Whole Foods uh, that I get it from Amazon right now. So yeah, we're on Amazon. So that's yeah. fine. Yeah, so that's great. So uh, we will sign off, but you guys know how to reach uh, Carly and Beekeepers Naturals. Do check them out. Honestly, I've looked at other products and I've looked at other, you know, 
types of, of ways to get this kind of great nutrients and nobody's doing it as well as Carly is and it's why her company is doing so well. So thank you so much for joining us. And Carly, if you'll stay on a little bit right after we say goodbye to everybody, just so I can thank you properly, I would appreciate that. And so thank you for being on. <laughs> appreciate it so much. I know everybody else does. And if you watch this live, I am so grateful for you. And if you're watching it in replay, I love you just as much. And remember, you can always watch the Junk You Should Know show on the Well Fit and Fed YouTube channel. So go over there and subscribe and do share this. This has been some tremendous content in a tiny amount of time. And, you know, this is like the major portion of what you need to know when you're heading out to buy some bee products and um, and super, super grateful. So thank you, Carly. And we will see you guys next Friday at noon PST. Goodbye. Thanks, guys. <laughs>